In other news at this hour, the epidemic of mass shootings in America has taken a toll on all Americans, especially those that are happening in schools. The loss of children in these deadly rampages is life-altering for victims' families, for survivors, and for the communities where they happen. Patricia Oliver lost her 17-year-old son Joaquin in the mass shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida in 2018. In the aftermath, she and her husband Manuel founded the group Change the Ref, which works to raise awareness about mass shootings and the need for change. Now the couple is out with a new children's book, and it's called Joaquin's First School Shooting. Democratic Whip Catherine Clark read it out loud on the House floor this week. Joaquin's first school shooting. The end of the day was also my own. Bled out on the floor and never got home. We heard a loud bang, then off went the alarm. My classmates freaked out, but I tried to stay calm. Out in the hall, a killer had a gun. He shot into a class, then came right for us. Patricia Oliver joins me now live. Patricia, thank you so much for being with us. And, and I want to go ahead and begin uh, just by saying that I'm sorry for your loss because I can't imagine how hard this has been for you and your husband, Manuel, who I've had a chance to speak with before. So Patricia, I, yeah. I know I know Hi, that you nice have- to having me today and um, thank you. And I just want to go ahead and, and, and preface the entire interview by saying that, that there is quite a delay between, uh, you know, Patricia and I. There's about six, to six seconds, but please stay with us, hang with us here, because I want to go ahead and talk a lot about this book, Joaquin's First School Shooting. Patricia, where did the idea come from, and, and what are you hoping to achieve? <laughs> Hi, how are you? Yeah, this is a new project that we work on it. You know that we have um, different kind of projects that they are brought to us through the advertising industry. And then we were, we were presented to this one. We decided to take it in our hands and we participated in putting all together illustrations and all the narrative inside the book. Uh, sadly, it's a book that relates the last day on Joaquin's in high school. Um, we decided that this is a very important tool. It's not a book. This is a tool more than a book. Because the book tells you in a very childish vocabulary the way Joaquin went through that day. And we hope that those politicians that are being hard to understand the important issue that is to fight gun violence, try this way to understand, to feel it, because this is something very strong to watch it, to read it. Every single illustration that takes you through that day of Joaquin's, and maybe their hearts could be open, and they maybe could be bringing in their minds an option for discussion, and put it on the table and bring it to their committees and bring it to their families because it's not only a, polit a political issue. This is a social issue that we have all to be involved. What has the reaction been like so far, Patricia? Because I know you're there in Washington right now. I know that you've been speaking with politicians. I, I, I'm sure that you're probably on the Hill right now outside somebody's office. What is the look been like on their face when you give them this book, when they look at the book, when they read this book? Well, you gotta see their faces. Their faces is like a, it's impossible to avoid their reaction. It's very impactful. And you can see that they get their watery eyes or they, you know, to me, it's very hard to be keep, keep reading and reading and reading the book, even looking at the cover of the book, because I see Joaquin in that picture, because that was Joaquin that day going with his backpack and bringing flowers to Tori, his girlfriend. So it's all take me back to that day. And is uh, very emotional. So I've been seeing that that emotion is not only 
coming from me as a mom fucking is coming from a different person that maybe is a mom or not but has the sensitivity to feel that they have to be a change that 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 that, that i'm right to be doing this kind of project no i i'm a mother as well i hear the emo emotion in your voice and i look at that book and i see the children hiding under desks and i see the way that you put the finger holes there in the book um which is where the bullet holes would go. And it, it is very, very difficult to look at. This is obviously not a children's book. Um, you and I are talking, uh, we're both mothers. What has Mother's Day been like for you since you've lost your son? There's no more Mother's Day to celebrate for me, not even for my daughter, Andrea, that yeah, you know you can think that, well, because for Andrea, we should do something. Andrea understands, Andrea perfectly feels the same way. We have nothing to celebrate. There is a very, very long time since what we, when we lost Joaquin that we don't celebrate major events. Everything happened at home. We celebrate every single occasion at home. There is always a family home where everything happens. That was our house. And ever since that day, we never ever celebrate anything. We just handle it like a regular Sunday. I don't want to know about it. So Patricia, you're there and you've been advocating for change. Uh, you've spent so much time doing this. Hats off to you and your husband. What kind of change do you want to see? I mean, do you think that common sense gun reform will ever get passed? What are you, what are you asking for specifically from lawmakers? With this book specifically, we are asking to assault one uh, ban weapons. I think it's very important because if you see in every single shooting, it doesn't have to be a mass shooting, but in a regular shooting, when it's more than one person, the main role is always the AR-15. So for that reason, I consider that the most important thing right now is to ban assault weapons. We are seeing little changes I'm not going to say on the political side as we were, we are expecting, but at least they are um, making here and there some steps. They are co-sponsoring, for example, Ethan's law, which is an storage law that it will require people that own a weapon to keep it in a safer storage. That's an important move. We also been seeing a lot of people coming from their own. They are tired, they are in fear, they wanna see solutions, they wanna see uh, to make a difference because now we don't live in a freedom country. That was the past, that is in the past. Today we fear to go anywhere. We fear, I am from Florida and I'm now fear to know which is the one that is next to me in every place I go. Because since the permitless carry law came through, we don't know who carries a gun or not, uh, what is the mood of that person or not. So you are always in a, in a constant fear. And I don't believe that we deserve that as a individuals, as a constituents, as a country. We believe that we deserve more. My husband and I have been working tireless and we won't stop. And this is another way to present the urgency to see changes in the gun laws. Patricia, I know you spent a lot of time in Washington. I know that you have spent a lot of time talking to politicians at the state and at the federal level. Have you ever spoken with any special interest groups, maybe with the gun lobby? Have you given this book to the NRA? No, I haven't. I haven't. I haven't give that to them yet because I've been just a meeting with the members of Congress and Senate. I'm not, I'm not having meetings with staffers. I decided this time to go straight to the representative in charge and see their faces, see how they're going to be reacting, see what they're going to give me as a feedback. We need that. We need that feedback from them, directly from them. And that's what we did this time in this trip. 
Patricia Oliver, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. Again, my heart goes out to you, and I really applaud you for the work that you and your husband have been doing.